Welcome to today's 3D print. This is a video a lot of people have been waiting for. We have the Ender 3 Pro. Now, I actually have two of these. Um, Gearbest sent me one. And our <coughs> dearly departed deceased cat ordered one. So I, I think this is the Gearbest one. And the other one is the cat one. And when the cat died, I couldn't bring myself to send it back. <laughs> so... I kept it. Basically, I when I did the links, I checked the links to make sure they worked and had it in my cart on Amazon. And I guess when I turned the monitor off, I left it on the screen. And the cat likes to lay down on top of the keyboard. So like 4 o'clock in the morning when I was in bed, he ordered one. And I just can't bring myself to send it back. So I have two. <laughs> so let's get started as we open up the Ender 3 Pro. Inside the box, sadly, it is not a fast assembly like some of the other printers. It is a full assembly like the Ender 3. But there we go. Oh, there's the mag surface. Okay. That's the magnetic build surface. So that's the inside of the box. There's your mean well power supply, your rails, your bits and pieces. So we're going to pull all this out of here and get started. Do not forget, if you are in the U.S., you do still need to switch the power supply to 115 volts. This is a mean well power supply. It should be a meanwhile power supply. It looks like a meanwhile power supply. Um, I'd have to pop off the end to see. Why is the labeling not there? This should have a meanwhile sticker on it. We're going to open this to make sure. But on the meanwhile power supply, they're 24 volts, but the fans are 12 volts, which means you can directly replace this fan with an ultra quiet fan. You don't have to adjust it. Over some of the changes to the Ender 3 Pro, first of all, better power supply. Okay, so now they're using the Meanwhile power supply. The My <laughs> CR20, 130 degrees, no problem. 110 degrees pretty quickly. My Ender 3 struggles to get to 110, really struggles. It will get to 120, but it takes a long time to get there. Um, this, no problem, better power supply. So this, this has the same power supply as the CR20, so it'll also have no problem reaching ABS temperatures. Quid pro quo on that. You cannot print ABS on an Ender 3 Pro. I'll get to that in a minute. Not stock. Um, I told them they needed to upgrade this. They had the skinny rail, which is a 20 by 40, and worse, they had it standing straight up. That's no good. It's it's just it makes the bed too easy to unbalance. So I told them they go need to either turn it sideways or go with a 4040. They chose to go with a 4040, which I wholeheartedly approve. So this has a 4040 rail here now. The other thing I told them is that they had a problem where this cover plate for the brain box would interfere with the rail being attached. So now it is notched. So the plate here is now notched. So you're not going to be able to easily see that. But there's a notch in the plate now. So it should not interfere anymore. I also told them that the brain box setup was bad. Because the fan input was right here. And so it would suck anything right into the printer. On the top of that, that placed the memory card down here in the corner. Which for someone with giant hands like me, that's impossible. I cannot reach that memory card, no matter what I do. I have to actually lift the printer up and come down here and grab that memory card to pull it out. Or I have to take, I have to push it out and take my two fingers like this and try to grab the edges of it and pull it out. So I told them, flip the board over. Mount the board to the top of the brain box and have the fan on the bottom and now they did oh they did use taller feet they didn't use the tall feet that i wanted but they did use taller feet like i suggested so that is a good thing too um so now the fan vents out the bottom that does two things one things don't fall inside of here and also falling inside of here would directly hit the board and short stuff that's not good but also by doing that the memory card is now on the top left instead of the bottom right now it's easy to get to. Anybody can get to it now. So those are some of the upgrades that I suggested to them, and they actually implemented them in the Ender 3 Pro. That's pretty cool. So I can confirm there is a Meanwell power supply in here. It is 24 volts, 14.6 amps. So pretty beefy power supply. Um, all the connections here are all properly crimped. They look like they're good. They're installed right. This ABS molded. Enclosure for the IEC is fantastic. I really like that. 
that was one of the complaints I gave to them is that they, this wasn't um, secure enough. It wobbled too much. And I say, what can they do about that? Well, they did it. This is nice and thick now. It's much more rigid and it's got three screws, one on the side, two on the back. So this is much, much more rigid now. Now, if you want to upgrade this printer to a quiet fan, the meanwhile power supplies have pretty noisy fans in them. This fan is 12 volts. The board is 24 volts, but it down converts to 12 volts for the fan. On every meanwhile power supply I've used so far, that is 12 volts. And the advantage of that is you can just replace the fan. <laughs> <laughs> so just get yourself a 60 millimeter by 10 millimeter noise blocker or knock to a fan and you can drop that right in there and plug it in and you're good to go. Also, if you're going to install these in a school environment, you're probably going to have to upgrade this power supply or get the Ender 3 Pros because these are UL, FCC, whatever approved. These are all standards approved while the stock power supply is not. So in a school environment, you actually might be forbidden from using those printers. I replaced the springs. Now the next thing I want to do is fix this. The bed's wobbling. That's not a bad thing that happens. They come loose. They're eccentric nuts. So on the right hand side of the bed, these two nuts here are eccentric. And in my case, they are both loose. This is important. You grab the back side, you can see that the back side wheel moves up and down, which means it's loose. And you can see here that the front side wheel is moving up and down, which means it's loose. Because you don't want to over tighten one. So you take your multi-wrench that it comes with, slide the bed all the way forward, and you can get access to the nut here. We're going to tighten it up a little bit. And we're going to ignore the front one. We're just going to keep tightening up that one there. Okay, see, now it doesn't wobble. If you look here, the back doesn't wobble anymore. See, it's wobbling, but the wheel's not wobbling. Okay, Front still wobbles. But now I want to loosen that to the point of almost not tight enough. Okay, see, now it's wobbling again. And now I just tighten it exactly enough to stop the wobble. Tiny bit more. I think that's enough. Slide it back and forth. You don't feel any buffeting. You don't feel like dimples or flat spots in the wheels. That means you got it good. If, it's, if you make it too tight, you're going to feel those dimples and flat spots as you move it. That's it. That's how you tighten up the bed on an Ender 3 or any of the Creality printers. You just you got to make sure you don't over tighten one. So you got to be careful with each one. Make sure it's just tight enough. And then at the end, what I'll do is I'll grab this and I'll move it left and right. And you'll feel it if that wheel is not quite in there right. And you grab the back and move it. See now, see, that back needs to be tightened just a hair. See how that back is moving just a little bit? Just a hair. There we go. Nice and snug. That's it. It's good. So, contents of the box. Your base assembled. I did change out the springs. I leveled it. Well, not leveled it, but tightened it up. Made not, no wobble. These are your left and right vertical rails. This is your top rail and your X rail. Your X, your X carriage is already here. Your left hand vertical trolley. Is here right hand vertical trolley is here tools parts bolts ptfe tubes fittings um spool holder and your screen assembly that is all here the us power cord the z lead screw was in the foam this time and not inside one of the rails and of course the meanwhile power supply Alrighty, the gantry is installed although i just realized i have to take it apart again because i forgot to put the vertically the two verticals are straight they are the same distance apart they are sitting flat i did not have to shim anything and the holes in the top brace are drilled correctly they fit in place and the distance remains exactly the way it's supposed to equal top and bottom and the two faces are flat relative to each other so they are not twisted or bent so that is very very good Alrighty, that took multiple assemblies, because um, <laughs> I kept putting it together wrong. But anyway, uh, I have the X-Arm with the gantry installed. We already know the parts are lined up straight, and they are cut straight, so that's all good. I did not use the washers to put in the hardened nuts for the X-Arm, because I think that makes it too loose. Do make sure that X-Arm is level. Okay. Then don't forget, this should move up and down freely, like this. Do not forget to readjust this wheel until it is just 
you should be able to turn it. You should be able to, if you push on it, you should be able to lift the gantry with it. But if you just turn it, you should be able to turn it. And just barely. And that's how you know you got just the right tightness so it's not going to resist moving up and down. Now, I did find a little fix. The arm was kicking out. Now, normally the solution to that is you loosen the two bolts holding this vertical in, and then you twist the vertical that way to bring that arm into alignment with this. I found a better solution. Basically, the spacing for this wheel and this wheel are different than the spacing for this wheel, which is kicking the arm out, or this plate's bent. Okay, So my solution was to put a washer between the plate on the front and the first spacer. You can reuse the washers that come with the printer. So these washers that I don't use, what I do is I slide a washer so that the opening is here at the side onto a pair of like nice round pliers like this. You can also use a punch or anything long and tapered like this. And then what I do is I take my pliers like this and I put it over top of the washer and then I take a wrench and I tap it down. Now normally I pin it against something like the side of my printer here. Okay. I'll show you that for video. So I pinned against something and I tap it down. And now you can see we've split open that washer. And now that washer will be big enough to slide over this. So free washers you can use for that. To get it off, put the pliers on the other side. Tap it off. And now you've split open the split washer. Oh, right there. So now you can just do that as much as you need to to make the washer fit over the bolt. And what that does is that pushes the wheel. Um, it pushes the distance from the wheel to the front plate, makes it a little bit bigger, which will bring the arm in. And now the arm sits where it's supposed to sit. So I don't have to bend anything, and I don't have to untrue my frame to do that. So now I can send Creality some advice. That actually, you need a washer a hair thinner than this. This is just a hair too thick, but it's good enough. I'd rather it push in than push out. But good to go. Now, I got the lead screw installed, I got the X gantry installed, I got the stepper motors plugged in except for the Z, Z axis installed. Now, here's the last test to um, make sure that this is proper and not too tight. Um, if you have a tightness issue on your lead screw, loosen the two little screws holding the bushing in place here. Okay, so if your lead screw doesn't line up with your coupler, just loosen these two screws and all of a sudden you'll have enough play and it'll line up fine. Okay, snug them up, don't tighten them. Now, from the front of the printer, put unplug the stepper motor to make this easier. Put two fingers on the coupler motor, just like that, okay? And roll it back and forth, okay? So I'm making it go up and down by rolling my fingers back and forth. As it rolls back and forth, pay attention to the right-hand side versus the left-hand side. They should be moving up together, like this, okay? If that side lags behind, so it does this... This is exaggerated, of course, but if that side lags behind, this eccentric nut is too tight or something else is too tight, okay? So this is not lined up or that is too tight. So what you want to do is loosen that nut a little bit so that when you roll it back and forth like this, that is in sync with this and doesn't lag behind. Because if that lags behind, if that's too tight, you'll never level this bed. You'll get it level, do a print, and you'll have to level it again and again and again. Because every time this moves up and down, that will lag behind by a slightly different amount, and you'll never get it lined up exactly every time. So you have to loosen that eccentric nut right there, so that when you do this, it doesn't lag behind, and the booth move up together. That's it. That's for any V-slot wheel printer, any printer really, that has a cantilever single Z-screw. That is where the problem always is. If you're having a problem with your thing tilting because of the single lead screw, it's not the single lead screw, it's this is too tight. Okay, loosen that until you do this and that doesn't happen. Alrighty, we are finished assembly. Um, let's see, what did I have to change? I did have to play with the bushing to line up the lead screw properly and I also loosened up this wheel a little bit more because I didn't like the way it was um, behaving. But now, when I move the printer up and down, this right-hand trolley does not move uneven from the left-hand trolley, which means I won't have a layering issue with leveling the bed. I installed the Z-Limit switch. The way I install my Z-Limit switch is I tighten these um, adjustment knobs all the way down so that the bed is compressed. Not crank them, just tighten them, okay? And then what I do is I push the limit switch all the way down. 
I lower the bed until the nozzle's about the height that I want, about twice the height that I want above the print bed. And then I raise the limit switch up until I hear the switch activate and I lock it in place. That gets you pretty close and gives you your maximum build volume. Um, that 500 bucks for gas is on top of the $400 electric bill. So that's 900 bucks a month just for electric and heat. And then another $110 for water and another 40 bucks for sewer. Yeah, I need to get out of here bad. <laughs> but, um, oh, that's, I'm going to have to edit that out of that video. <laughs> I don't want that in that video. But anyway, spool holders installed, um, compression fittings installed, wires are laced up, all the switches are plugged in. We are ready for first power up and we will see what happens. So, you know how everybody loves the plastic porn. Oh, that one felt good. <laughs> Stay tuned. Well, critters, my initial test prints on the Ender 3 Pro are finished. That took a long time to turn off. <laughs> From the time I hit the switch, that was a long time. They definitely have enough power in their capacitors to do the Prusa Move thing if they can figure out the code to do it. They'll probably need hardware, too. Anyway, the first print was the Little Marvin, and it is pretty darn close to perfect. I mean, it's really good. I'm not exaggerating. I mean, even the zipper line is barely visible right there. You see it? This um, I haven't updated this Marvin to put the zipper in the back. But I'm going to see if it has autofocus. Yeah, I think it does. Really clean Marvin. So then I printed the typical phase. This shows me airtight, watertight. So this will hold water. I drank some Propel out of it last night. <laughs> Very clean print. I have zero complaints. This is 3D Prima Red. They sent me some of their filament, and I do enjoy it. I would like their colors to have a little more vibrancy. Their filament's fantastic, but their dyes could use a little more, you know, some deeper, nicer colors like Paramount makes. But good filament, though. Print's extremely clean. But there is the rose for your girl vase. See, it glistens beautifully, very little noise, very little artifacts, a very tiny bit of salmon skin, and I mean a tiny bit. you got to really look for it. Then, if anybody gets uppity with me, I'll take care of them with some nozzle dusters. So there is the print surface side. You see it's got that matte finish from the Creality BuildTac clone surface. Then you have the... Uh, shiny side which is the top layer as you can see beautifully done very very nice i'm really pleased with that I'm, we're gonna have to open this up and see what board is in here i have a feeling this has the 2.1 board because that looks a bit cleaner than the original under threes with the 1.1.3 board and then when i left last night from the live stream i set it to printing one of my nose cones and it's about perfect i mean it's not as ridiculously amazing as the ABS nose cone I printed on the CR20, actually Ender 3, um, but it's not bad. There are no imperfections, no out of place layers, no deviations. Running my fingers up this, you can know you'll feel it. You'll feel the little where a layer is slightly out of place. You'll feel it a little bit. Very, very nice. And it's almost impossible for me to find the salmon skin. I can see it right here. I can see the salmon skin right there. See those little arcs? See how they curve a little bit right there? That's the salmon skin. Very hard to see. Here's your zipper line. Very clean zipper line. Very subtle. This did a good job. This did a really good job. The overhangs are almost, almost actually attached one single layer is detached and even that is almost attached that's some of the best overhangs i've seen in a long time that's really good this obviously only attaches by this little area here there's no brim no other support just that little bit attaches and you're good that's a beautiful brim i have a zero complaints about that very happy um, I don't like the print surface, but only because I want to print exotic materials. And while this magnetic build surface works fantastically, 
it makes it super easy to peel off anything really anything that gets on here is super easy to peel off with the magnetic surface it just comes right off no problem you do have to be careful sometimes i had to actually turn mine around backwards this way with the tab in the back and put it on because sometimes the magnetic field of a portion of the platen doesn't line up correctly and the magnets oppose instead of attracting so what was happening i thought i had a bow in the bed i don't the bed is perfectly flat i i don't know if they i have to measure it and see if they actually used a thicker plate it looks thicker but that might be the magnetic substrate making it look thicker but the bed is absolutely flat perfect i thought it was bowed in the middle because the magnet the magnetic surface area in the middle was repelling when i put it on this way there's a bump right here and a bump right here where the magnetic fields, the field lines don't align. So it's actually pushing the print surface up. Oh, there we go. That's flat. Okay, I got it there. Okay, so I have to have this sticking out a little bit and this sticking back a little bit to line them up properly. But make sure there's no bubble from the magnetic fields misaligning. So if you have it on the wrong position, you, you'll have a piece of the surface pushing up. But beyond that, no problems. It's beautiful. The parts peel off super easy. You just peel this off and your part peel. Usually what you'll do is you'll grab this from one end like this. And you'll actually just grab your part like this and you'll just peel them apart like that. It's so easy. But there is one very large problem with this magnetic print surface. You can't go over 70C. If you hit 80C, you will degauss it and it will no longer stick that would be bad which means no abs and no polycarbonate you can do pet g as long as you don't go above 70 make sure you use glue stick and you can do nylon because you're going to use garolite and again you only need 60 or 70. um you'll have to attach garolite to the top of this you might get away with pva glue stick i don't know but you probably have to put garolite on there and of course you can do pla and all of its alternatives nozzle temperature doesn't matter it's bed temperature where you can't go above 70 C. So I guess the only thing you can't print really is ABS and polycarbonate. Those are the only things within the range of this printer. So if you never intend to print those, you're good. Don't worry about it. But um, part of the, the nice thing about the Ender 3 Pro is the Meanwell power supply, which allows you to reliably get to ABS bed temperatures. Because if you make your bed temperature 120 C, you'll create a bubble of warm air around your print and you can print even prints this large on an Ender 3 with no delamination or cracking. Although ABS does not stick very well to this Creality surface. Um, but yeah, I'm pleased. It's nice. And if you can get it, I think it's on sale right now on Creality eBay. I added the link to the description, $249. I mean, crap. It's going to cost you, what, 40 bucks to get that power supply to upgrade your printer. And you also get the better electronics, and you also get the better QC and build. I had zero QC issues assembling this thing, um, except for I needed to put two washers on these wheels to shift this arm correctly. Minor thing, not a big deal. And you get that nice beefy um, Y- um, rail your extrusion and you also get the upgraded electronics that are inverted with the fan on the bottom which means you don't have to worry about stuff getting sucked into here and it also means it's easy to grab the SD card because the SD card is now you can't see that there it is the SD card is now up here up top because they flipped it around 180 so you don't have to fight to get your Big American hands down here in this corner to try to grab that SD card. It's just it's right here, right at the top, which is really nice. I actually don't mind the micro SD card now because of how convenient the access is to getting to it right there. Um, otherwise, I'm happy. They did a good job, and I hope it succeeds. You guys have a great day. I will continue making more prints. I have two of these. My um, GearBest sent me this one, and my cat ordered the other one, my deceased cat. He laid down on top of the keyboard what was in my shopping cart at 4 o'clock in the morning. I guess he hit the right combination to do a one-click buy. <laughs> By the time I woke up at 10 o'clock next morning, I work nights. Um, it was already on its way. <laughs> I was going to send it back, but then I realized, you know, I love that cat, so I'm going to keep the printer. <laughs> but um, that's it. You guys have a great day.